Try Audible Plus risk-free and get access to thousands of titles, including a vast array of audiobooks, podcasts, and originals that span genre, length, and format. Follow the link in the description and start your free trial of Audible Plus today. Hey, what's up, people? Piz out here, and... Said during the Video Nasties era in the UK, we're introduced to Enid, a particularly dogged censor who feels it's her responsibility to protect the people of Britain from morally bankrupt and reprehensible horror films. Enid's newest assignment is to censor a film that hits chillingly close to home, unearthing old and painful demons. Now, if you're a horror fan around my age, I'm sure you're aware of the infamous Video Nasties list from the early 80s. The list included films like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Dawn of the Dead, and Friday the 13th, just to name a few. These were films that the British censors felt had no morally redeemable qualities, and that the violent and depraved acts depicted therein would turn normal moviegoers into bloodthirsty maniacs. It was a time of widespread panic and heavy censorship in the UK. The media, politicians, and activists all lobbied that violent movies created violent people. And now that video stores were becoming commonplace, making these kinds of films readily accessible to anyone, particularly children, Many films were heavily edited or outright banned on home video. The list of banned movies were dubbed Video Nasties. When I learned that censor takes place during this time and that the film's protagonist was a censor, I felt instantly intrigued. I knew literally nothing else about the movie, but went into it plenty excited. And the first hour of censor is... pretty awesome. There's a lot going on during the film's first two acts. We get social commentary, humor and mystery. There's a subplot involving a real murder that is eerily similar to a film that was passed by the censors. The media runs with this, blaming the film for inspiring the killer and demonizing the censors for allowing it to be seen. There's some great moments of humor in which Enid and a co-worker debate how much gore is too much gore. A decapitation is okay, but an eye gouging? That's too far. Or when a co-worker remarks that we're running out of places to go after reading the title of the latest film they're assigned to censor, Don't Go in the Church, a play on the plethora of don't movies already out there. And all of this, for a horror geek like me, was riveting stuff. Seeing references to movies like Driller Killer, Nightmare in a Damaged Brain, and Deranged was cool. And getting a behind-the-curtain look at how the censors justified their censorship was fascinating. Neve Algar delivers a phenomenal performance as Enid. On the surface, she appears to be a buttoned-down conservative young woman who takes her job seriously. As a matter of fact, she doesn't consider it a job at all, but a responsibility. However, Enid has demons. Some pretty big ones, in fact. And while viewing Don't Go in the Church, these demons start clawing their way to the surface. Now, it's at this point in the movie that I felt like Censor made me a promise. A promise that it didn't keep. There's a great line of dialogue in the film in which a character says, you'd be surprised what the human mind can edit out when it can't handle the truth. It only makes sense that a character who's edited out certain memories from their own mind would land a gig as a censor. And as the film goes on, more edited memories from Enid's past are revealed. And like any good mystery, the movie doesn't tip its hand, but gives you more and more pieces to the puzzle as the film goes on. However, the last act of censor goes the ambiguous route. The very ambiguous route. Now don't get me wrong, I love an ambiguous ending. But here it feels like co-writer and director Prano Bailey Bond just ran out of ideas. The plot goes out the window, the mystery elements wave bye-bye, and we're treated to surreal lighting, psychedelic editing, and bloodshed to fill in the last half hour. It's like I started watching a more grounded Evil Ed, and then it went way Evil Ed. What really happened, and why is Enid so haunted by it? No clue, but she sure can swing an axe. Censor is a well-made, great-looking movie with a captivating performance from Neve Alger, and any horror fan should find the video nasty stuff thoroughly entertaining and fun to watch. But ultimately, Censor was a disappointment, because all the promise from the first hour was squandered. I'm kind of torn here, because I still want to recommend Censor despite the issues that I had with it. Again, the first hour is so good. Just don't expect any answers or a satisfying resolution or anything of the like. Or if you're the kind of person who doesn't like ambiguous endings, 
Steer Clear of Censor. Censor is now playing in select theaters and is available to stream right now on Amazon Prime. If you've seen Censor, please let me know your thoughts on the film down in the comments section below. Also, let me know what some of your favorite video nasties are down in the comments section below also. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. A huge shout out to all my patrons and channel members. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and join me for exclusive live streams, get early access to videos, and have a say in what movies I review on my channel. Become a channel member and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.